I want to tell you about a time when I had a really bad sinus infection. It was so bad that I couldn't listen to music because it was just painful. Then after a few days I got better and then I was able to listen to music. But what I found really interesting is once I was able to listen to music again, my appetite for it was just insatiable. Like I gotta have some Led Zeppelin and Rolling Stones right now. And so this experience is what got me thinking about the connection between humanity and music. And that's what I'm gonna talk about today. The three areas that I'm gonna cover are why humans develop music, why we like the music that we like, and how music affects us. It is my love of music that got me to research this very interesting topic. We'll begin by looking at some of the reasons why humans developed music. Unlike other skills that humans have developed over time, the reason for developing music is less obvious. If you look at certain other skills like the use of tools, language, agriculture, those have pretty obvious benefits. The benefits of music are less obvious, but there are theories about it. Mark Silver wrote, Why Did Humans Invent Music in National Geographic? And one thing he points out is that music can bring groups together. It can help form uh, cultural identity. Uh, we can see this in national anthems. Another example would even be in school songs. For, for example, here's NKU's school songs. We will win over all, shouting our mighty call that the victory is near. So very much that sense of being connected. We see it in religious music with songs like Amazing Grace. And uh, we can even see this in the behavior at concerts. Let me show you an example of what I mean. This is the Rolling Stones. That's Keith Richards. That's Mick Jagger. Now watch what he does with his hands. He starts clapping his hands above his head, and if you look at the crowd, the people in the front start doing it, and it starts spreading to the back of the crowd. And pretty soon, you literally have tens of thousands of people all doing the same clapping behavior in unison. Another reason why humans develop music is to pass down information. This is according to Dr. Victoria Williamson in Do We Need Music in the publication Music Psychology. It helps us remember things. As a simple example, I'm going to ask you this question. What is the tenth letter of the alphabet? Well, as you were trying to figure that out, did you hear the alphabet song in your head? Well. That's one of the ways we help kids with their memory, is to use that song to help them remember the alphabet. And by the way, the answer is J. Stories of the past are another thing that we pass down through music. Uh, humans have used uh, music to pass down stories for thousands of years, says Silver. Uh, some examples would be uh, Ring Around the Rosie, a song that many of us learned as kids. And this song is actually about the bubonic plague, and so it was a way to pass down information about the plague. Another example would be the powerful song, We Shall Overcome. And certainly for centuries, it's going to be an important reminder of the struggle for civil rights. Another reason humans may have developed music is to form bonds between individuals. This includes parents and babies, according to Williamson. He points out that lullabies exist in, cultural, in cultures all across the world, and that it is shown that it helps soothe the children and that also it creates a stronger bond between the parent and the child. It's also important for bonds with romantic partners. Here's one way we can see that. These are the most common words in song titles over a period of six decades and you can see many of them are related to relationships between romantic partners. Baby, lonely, fire, love, you, we. Another example would be the songs that are used as a first dance at weddings and wedding receptions. And so, uh, as you would expect, there's songs about bringing people together, including one called Better Together and I Can't Help Falling in Love as examples. Next, we'll take a look at why the, we love the music that we love. Most people have a certain type of music that they prefer, and one of the reasons is brain chemistry. This is according to Valerie Salmapour in a publication called Science. The music that we like actually releases 
pleasure chemicals in our brain. She conducted a study where she had subjects listen to music and then rate how interested they were in buying those songs. And they scanned their brains while they did this and found that there was a correlation. Specifically, when they heard songs that they were interested in buying, there were increases in dopamine and serotonin being released in their brains. Another reason why we prefer certain types of music is brain development. This is according to Mark Joseph Stern in Why Are We So Nostalgic for Music We Loved as Teenagers in Slate Magazine. The music that we hear as adolescents does tend to stay with us. Stern says the following, between the ages of 12 and 22, our brains undergo rapid neurological development, and the music we love during that decade seems to get wired into our lobes for good. Here's a short personal example. I was only seven years old when the Beatles broke up, but I grew up with three older brothers who all loved the Beatles, and I had access to Beatles records, so that's what I was listening to, and to this day, they are my favorites. Another reason we like certain types of music is association with memories. This is according to Christopher Bergland in Why Do the Songs from Your Past Evoke Such Vivid Memories in Psychology Today? To quote Bergland, a study from the University of California mapped the brain while people listened to music and found specific brain regions linked to autobiographical memories and emotions that are activated by familiar music. So music will remind us of a specific time in our life, a, a specific place that we remember, maybe even a specific person who was important in our life. There's a case study of this, and it comes from neurologist Dr. Oliver Sacks in the book Musicophilia. The case study is about a gentleman named Clive. Clive has severe amnesia because of a brain infection that he suffered. The only people in the whole world he can recognize are his wife and his children. He has almost no long-term memory, and in fact, can it can remember events generally no more than about a minute. In fact, if his wife comes to visit him and then she steps out for a couple minutes and then comes back in, he greets her as if he hasn't seen her for weeks. But one exception to this with Clive's memory is music. He can play music on an organ and sing songs from decades ago. Lastly, we're gonna take a look at how music affects us. Music often has significant effects on us, even though we may not be aware of it. One example is mood. This can be seen in movies and TV shows. I conducted an interview with Chris Strobel, who's a professor of electronic media and broadcasting at NKU, and he said the following. Music is, at its essence, excuse me, music is, at its essence, a personification of emotion, and without emotional connection, film is simply pictures on a screen. So, we become aware of it, especially when it doesn't match, when the music really doesn't go along with what we're seeing on the screen. Here's an example of what I mean. Another way we see the connection between music and mood is with people who suffer from depression. Research shows that many people with depression benefit from music. This is according to Stephanie Pappas in Making Music Proves to be P Powerful Antidepressant that appeared in Live Science. This includes both listening to music and playing music, and she points out that you don't actually have to know how to play music. Even if you don't know how to play a guitar, just st strumming the strings can be helpful. Uh, she also points out that it should be used in combination with other therapies. And a brief personal example about this, I have suffered from clinical depression my entire adult life, and I do use music as one tool to help me cope. Another way that music affects us is ability, according to Sachs. It can actually enhance learning and enhance memory. It can also assist people with disabilities in many cases. And we certainly see this in the field of music therapy, which is big and getting bigger. And Music therapy can be used to help with a, a whole a group of different issues, including breathing problems, high blood pressure, and pain management. 
Music also plays an important role in setting the mood for mating. This is according to the Sydney Morning Herald. We certainly see this in animals. It's an important part of the process for whales, birds, and monkeys. And it certainly is true for humans as well. And according to the Sydney Morning Herald, who do you think is the most popular artist in setting the mood for humans? Well, it's Marvin Gaye. All right, let's review. I've shared some information on how music is a part of us being humans. I have covered some theories on why humans develop music. I've talked about why we like certain types of music, and I've talked about the different ways that music affects us. So I'd like to close by encouraging you to make music part of your life every day, and if you want, you can borrow some of my Marvin Gaye CDs.